so um, this story came up about how I booked uh, the Nash Bridges series, and I said, uh, "Sure, I'll I'll talk about it." I was doing some some interview thing or AI thing recently, and I hadn't told the story in a long time, and I I, I thought it was uh, it was pretty unbelievable in the telling, <laughs> hearing myself tell the story. Um, I'd I got a call for the show. Uh, it was like a December, I guess. Um, I was living over on Fountain Avenue and I was driving in my, my Honda Prelude car. I, I absolutely loved, drove that thing to death. And as I was coming down Fountain, I was going west on Fountain, the engine just, just gave out. And I was coasting down Fountain and parked on Fountain was my broken down 63 Buick. Uh, so I... I slowed and there was parking right behind it. So I pulled right in behind, <laughs> behind the Buick and I had, uh, two broken down cars. Um, I got home, I came inside, I, just shaking my head. I just, I couldn't believe it. I mean, I was happy I found parking, but, uh, but that was the extent of my, extent of my happiness. And I checked my message machine because we had machines in those days. Uh, and I had an audition. It was uh, uh, 3400 Riverside in Burbank. So I had to walk to the bus stop. I got on the bus. It took me probably two and a half hours to get there. Uh, I went and read for the, for the producers and everybody. And the audition literally lasted probably 40 seconds <laughs> at the most. And I remember walking back uh, back down Riverside and then I was out there by the front of Warner Brothers and uh, uh, I, it was either bus fare or buy a taco at the Taco Bell <laughs> right there and Warner Brothers was all covered in Christmas lights and, and looking all beautiful and um, it was just uh, just one of those days that every actor's felt that's like what am I doing what am I what am I even thinking you know pursuing this so I finally got home about two and a half hours later, um, didn't hear anything, you know, and then um, on, a, on a Friday, I get a call that uh, I need to go to CBS on Beverly. And it was, uh, it was Friday evening. There was no sides, there's no material. It was uh, just, you have a meeting. So I, I got up that morning, I think it was like 11 in the morning or something. So I, I, uh, I got up, I walked down Fountain to Fairfax, which is, I don't know, a mile and a half or something. But it was, it was hot as heck, you know, December in LA, blazing hot. Um, I got on the bus at Fairfax and Fountain. And as we start to go, we're going south, I'm, I'm sitting in the back of the bus. I look up front and some guy pulled a knife on the bus driver and he's threatening the bus driver. And the bus driver is like, this guy had to be a war veteran or something because he was just completely calm. And he's like, everybody, everybody out of the back, get out of the back of the bus. So everybody's moving out and, and he opens up the doors and I'm like, oh my gosh, seriously? So we get out of the bus and as I come by the front door, I'm looking at the bus driver like, you know, do you need help? And he just stood there and he looked and he just looked at me and kind of nodded It said he had it under control. So we all moved down the road and I had to get to Beverly in Fairfax uh, and the only way I could do it was just to run. So I ran all the way down Fairfax uh, uh, to Beverly, as I said. I, I got to CBS, and this is before they had a big, a big gate around it. Uh, it was Saturday morning. I get to the, to the guard gate. There's nobody in the guard gate. I go to the front doors, and uh, I knock on the doors, and I, I open the doors. And this was the studio where they did all the game shows, Price is Right, all that kind of stuff. And... I go in and there's this little old man and uh, I said, I'm, I'm here to read uh, for the show. And he's like, um, follow the yellow line. And I'm like, excuse me? He said, just, just 
follow the yellow line. And I didn't know what he was talking about. And he looked down, and I looked down, and sure enough, on the ground was this 